This is Robert with Pioneer Smokehouses, and today we're going to make a basic cheese queso, and I'm going to make it a little bit thinner than what I normally make. And this will make it a lot easier to dip and to use for multiple purposes. I'm going to use this one as a base for a recipe for dinner. Let's start by getting the smoker going. Now, first thing, I popped a picture here of the uh, charcoal snake that I set up. Now, I want to get somewhere in the 275 to 300 temperature range, so I'm doing what I would like to call a six stack. That's two wide and three high, and that should net me about the temperature that I want. If I need to go up a little bit in temperature, I can add a few pieces of lump charcoal to the top or a few pieces of wood blocks, especially if I want to add a little bit more smoke flavor because the wood blocks will smolder when they're starting up and that'll give that extra kick of smoky flavor to the dip. Now, I'm going to uh, go ahead and grab the charcoal chimney and load that in there. I have a charcoal chimney here and I got to say that this one is well lit. I lit it on the side burner of my propane grill and then I set it off to the side to rest and it might have gone just a little further, but you can see that they are actually going really well. And then I'm going to go ahead and feed this in just like normal, starting with placing some right on top of the block of wood so that way we can get that going right away. I loaded that charcoal chimney and I'm going to pop a picture up here and you can see that I just started by covering the wood block, which I like to call that the igniter. And then I just piled the rest in there right up against the charcoal snake to kind of fill it out and continue it. Now we want this to get up to full temperature. So I'm going to go ahead and put the smoker back together, starting with the drip pan. I guess you can call it a water pan also. Today I'm not going to put the lower grate in because there's really no need for it. I'm going to go ahead and just set this on the top here because we're just using it as a cooking surface and the bottom will be completely empty. So there's no reason to take any chance of getting it messed up or dirty or anything. And this will do the whole job that we need. The next thing that we'll do is I'm going to go ahead and set this on there. Now remember that you'll have to load it in there while it's hot, but it's okay. I want that to go ahead and get heated up as soon as possible. Next thing I'll do is put the door on. Then I have the lid hanging back here, and I know I haven't mentioned it before, but there's this little clip right here that allows you to hang the lid on there, and I normally don't use it, but I did want to show you that today. We'll set this on there, and then we'll move on to the cheese. So if you take a look at the cutting board here, what we have is some one-third less fat cream cheese, which you can use regular if you want. There's hardly any difference. And then we have a block of mild cheddar and a block of Monterey Jack. If you want more of a nacho cheese fill, you could use more cheddar. I prefer this as a basic mix. Also, uh, pepper jack is a really good cheese to go in here if you want to increase the spice level. For seasonings, I'm going to use a little bit of chili powder, a little bit of smoked paprika, of course, and a little bit of granulated garlic. Not a lot. Because I'm trying to keep it mild, I'm using a can of original diced tomato and green chili Rotel. Now this is their original and they do make a milder version, but this is going to work out perfectly fine. And then for the liquid base, we're using two cups of milk. This one just happens to be a low fat, low carb blend, but that's just what I had in the fridge. So I'll go ahead and uh, get this stuff all open and we'll be right back. So I got all the cheese opened up and then what I did is I went ahead and cut each block into eight pieces. Now it's not absolutely necessary that you cut it all up, but if you do, you'll be able to kind of get a head start on the mixing. What we're gonna do is heat it up slowly and then we're gonna mix it every so often until it all comes together. And once it comes together, it'll just about be done because everything will have been melted. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and load it into the pan. I'm going to go ahead and load the block cheese first. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I'm going to just set these in here randomly. They'll kind of melt down in there as they go. Now, I have the Rattel and all the juice, and I'm going to pour off about half of that juice. I'll be right back. If you're not sure how much of that juice to pour off, pour it in a cup and save it on the side for the end of the process, and then if you need it thinner, you can add it to the queso. For me, I'm going with a pretty thin queso already, so I want to get a little bit of that liquid out of there because I want more of the milk flavor. Now I have some seasonings here and I'm going to start with some garlic and we're going for about one teaspoon. Maybe a little more. If you want to measure it out, measure it out and then adjust it how you feel comfortable with. And for the smoked paprika, about a half of a teaspoon. And then the chili powder, you want to go just about one teaspoon. Finally, we're going to go ahead and add our milk and kind of try to pour it in there nice and slow. And this should fill the pan up pretty well. Go slow in case it's too much milk for your pan. Then you can come along later and add more to it. That's perfect. This is a uh, eight by eight brownie pan uh, that you can buy at any uh, major store or you can check out one of the links below uh, to pick it up on Amazon. Everything's all in there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait about an hour for everything to come up to temperature and it all to melt. For you, that'll be one second. We are back and it is raining cats and dogs out here. The sky just exploded, and as soon as there was a lightening up of the uh, rain, I ran out here as fast as I could. Let's go ahead and open it up, and first thing I want to note is the temperature is running about 250, which is a little lower than what we were going for. So as soon as I'm done giving this a little stir, I'm going to go ahead and add some uh, more charcoal to it, lump charcoal to get the temperature up, and then a couple of blocks of wood. Now, this cheese has melted in a little bit and the container is completely full. This might have been the point where you'd want to use a little bit larger container. I'm just going to carefully mix it. Again, you can also curl the edges up just a little bit and that'll help get you just a little bit more space there. And you can see that some of the cream cheese got a little smoke on it before it melted into the uh, pan. That's a good thing. That just adds more flavor to your mix. Now we don't have to get this completely mixed now. We just wanna give it a little turn around and then we're gonna let it go. At this point, we've been going a little over an hour. Like I said, I went just a couple of minutes long because of the rainstorm that was coming over. And we're going to target for another hour at least to get that all melted in and incorporated. Now, again, it's coming up to temperature, but we're going to raise it up a little bit more. So after I turn the camera off, I'm going to go ahead and add a row of lump charcoal across the top of the charcoal snake just to bring it up in temperature. So it's been another hour for me and I have stirred it a couple of times and uh, it's coming together really well. It still needs a little bit more time. We're currently running at about 275 on the temperature. 
I uh, added a little bit of that lump charcoal to the top and it really kicked the temperature up. Let's go ahead and get a look inside. It's really starting to come together now. Still just a little ways off. Just have to complete the melting so that way we can get it to mix well. I have sampled it and the smoke is definitely taking in there perfectly. And we are going for a thinner queso here, so this is exactly the way we want it. You can see there's still a lot of little clumps in there, but as the heat transfers after the last mix, that'll all start to melt down and it'll come together perfectly. So let's go ahead and take another break here. And I think that'll be about a half an hour for me and one second for you. It's been about 40 minutes and I've stirred it once in between uh, to kind of get it to break up a little bit. Let's go ahead and take the cover off. It is looking really good now. I was worried that we weren't getting hot enough to get it all melted together, but look at that. And the last time I stirred it, there was a little bit more of a crust on the top. And that crust is just smoky goodness that stirs right in. Looks pretty good there. I got some uh, tortilla chips here. And let's get a little try. Mm. Very good. Friends don't let friends double dip. <laughs> so anyway, this is uh, perfect for what I was going for. It's thinner than what I would normally make. And if you want your queso on this recipe to be a little thicker, add less milk. It's really simple to just cut the milk in half. Normally on my dips, that's about where I will go is about one cup of milk instead of two, but I wanted to make a thinner queso on purpose. And the best thing about this one is that it does have that smoke taste. This is gonna be really convenient to use when it's cold. A thick queso is hard to use when it's cold because it just firms up too much. When this one cools, it'll still be thin enough to be like a chip dip. Not a lot of spice in there. If you want some spice, you could hit it with something else. Um, like in my case, I would normally drain a can of diced jalapenos or green chilies and put it in there. But you could put whatever your favorite is in there, like whether it be chipotle or whatever you like to add that kick of your favorite flavor. I prefer jalapenos myself. Well, that's the end of this video. And again, I think we've really got this master built charcoal bullet smoker under control and we're kind of understanding it. Still kind of uh, balancing because my practice was all in the hotter weather and now the weather is cold. Now I have to add a little bit more charcoal to get to the temperatures that I was getting a month ago. So thanks for watching. And if you saw anything you like, there's affiliate links in the description below. I will get compensated for those, but they won't cost you anything extra. So thanks again. Have a great day.